Good morning. The friends and families of Holy Trinity Catholic Church, thank you for joining us today for the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass can be viewed via live stream on the parish's Facebook page and heard each Sunday on KVFD 1400 at 8.30 a.m. Welcome to this celebration of the Mass of the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 824, In Christ There Is No East or West. Hymn number 824, please rise. In Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great family bound by love throughout the whole wide earth. In him shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find. His service is the golden cord close binding humankind. Join hands, disciples in the faith, whatever your race may be, who serve each other in Christ's love are surely kin to me. Good morning. Good morning, Monsignor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory Lord God heavenly King O oh God Almighty Father Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord, and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Be glad and shout for joy with a brightness you rule the peoples, you guide the nations on earth. Oh God, oh God, let all the nations praise you. Let the peoples praise you, oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God still give us his blessing that all the ends of the earth may revere him. Oh God, oh God, let all the nations praise you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable, just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Proclaim the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters? Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. In these next couple of weeks, as we consider our own stewardship of faith, this gospel today, wherein we witness that verbal duel of the Canaanite woman and Jesus, well, it provides us for a very bedrock of, well, coming to some understanding of our coming to faith. The nature of the exchange between Jesus and the Canaanite woman, well, it's anything but polite. As we see in the woman, who is not a Jew, well, she makes three approaches to Jesus. And her first approach is really the mark of her, the beginning of her own faith. Whatever religion, if she practiced any, well, who knows? But she is confronted with this terrible reality in her life, and she knows of only one who can help to bring peace to that moment. She turns to Jesus. And this begins, well, her own journey of faith. She looks to Jesus for a miraculous cure for her daughter. But what does she get? Well, he really doesn't pay much attention to her at first as he says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The Canaanite woman is not of the Jewish faith. And yet the woman, she presses on. And she says, Lord, help me. And in spite of, well, the terrible humiliation that she might suffer, she presses on and Jesus says, well, it's not right to take the food of the children and to give it to the dogs. But again, she persists. She has nothing to lose. And so she simply says, Please, Lord, even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. And what is not evident in her retort is the simple fact that she has now become fully one of Christ's children. She can turn to no other. 
She knows that she is at the master's table. She knows Jesus to be her Lord and Savior. And with this, the heart of Jesus is changed. Now what Jesus saw in the Canaanite woman in that whole experience was a faith that could withstand an assault. It was a faith that was a love that was divine. And it demonstrates a hope that could not be shaken. Jesus certainly tested her mettle. And she found something within herself that she didn't even realize existed. Not unlike the humiliation that Christ himself would suffer at the end of his own life. She transcends the ordinary humanity and came to a level of life and a true love that really is God's. And her three-step journey in this faith, well, it mirrors Christ's own journey to his death on the cross and ultimately our salvation. The critical point is that Jesus sees the very same thing in you and me. In Christ's passion, death, his whole life, we find the stuff of real humanity, particularly so when we join, well, our own sufferings to his suffering, passion, death. Each one of us has known or will know in some way our own trials and tribulations, our sufferings. Now, they may or may not be at the hand of another, as was Jesus. But even in our suffering, as the Canaanite woman demonstrates today, we can ascend to new spiritual heights or union with God. The Canaanite woman might never have ascended the heights of glory that she did in her faith journey without encountering that tribulation. But what matters is what she did with it. In the divine scheme of things, the more, the more that we join our life's path to that of Jesus, well, the more we will pass from what is human to what is truly divine. Our own sufferings, be they physical or spiritual, they can bring us to the Lord with our prayers of petition. Like Jesus, or the Canaanite woman for that matter, we might not experience an answer to our prayer right away. But our prayers nonetheless help us to ascend to the heights of glory that are hidden within our destiny yoked to Christ. God comes among us with healing power. And he is looking for our faith. The Canaanite woman came to God in faith and in search of healing, and she found it. Our task is to well, live a life story just like hers. And we all question, can we do it? Well, yes, we can. Because Jesus lived it first and then gives us the power and indeed the capacity to live lives like that. The question really is not, can we? The real question becomes, will we? We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our prayers to our merciful God with joyous hearts. For the church, may the Holy Spirit guide us in all things, helping us to observe what is right and do what is just. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may the Spirit help to unite people across cultures, races, and religions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who are sick or suffering in any way, may they find comfort in God's bountiful mercy and in his compassionate care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For this faith community, May the Lord stir our hearts for beginning and ending all days in praise of his goodness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For all who have died, Richard Heathman, may God let his face shine upon them and bring them to everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. And for the intention of this mass, Rick Junkman, John Condon, David Condon, and Karen Reeder, Larry Flannery, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the prayers we hold silently in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. God our Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations. Help our people offer their lives. Our song of preparation is hymn number 965, Healer of Every Ill, hymn number 965. In the pain 
pain and joy beholding how your grace is still unfolding give us all your vision god of love healer of all every ill light of each tomorrow give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Give us strength to love each other, every sister, every brother, spirit of all kindness, be our guide. Healer of all every of each tomorrow give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow pray brothers and sisters of my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty father may Lord accept sacrifice from your hands Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection 
you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. With the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. Oh, let your ears be attentive to the sound of my pleading. With the Lord there is mercy, in Him is plentiful redemption. If you, O Lord, should mark inequities, Lord, who could stand? With the Lord there is mercy. In him is plentiful redemption. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. With the Lord there is mercy, in Him is plentiful redemption. Our communion song is hymn number 974. Here, Master, in this quiet place, hymn number 974. in this quiet place where anyone may kneel I also come to ask for grace believing you can heal if pain of body stress of mind destroys my inward peace. In prayer for others may I find the secret of release. If self upon its neck misfeeds, then turns my life to gold. Let me not brood upon my needs, but simply tell you all. You never said you asked too much to any troubled soul. I long to feel your healing touch. Will you not make me whole? But if the thing I most desire Is not your way for me My faith was tested in the fire Prove its integrity of all my prayers, may this be chief, till faith is fully grown. Lord, disbelieve 
my unbelief and claim me as your own. Let us pray. <clears throat> Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, Religion reigns forever and ever. Amen. Right, you please be seated for just a moment as Marianne Kessick comes forward to speak about catechesis of the Good Shepherd. Good morning. In Matthew, Chapter 19, verse 14, we hear Jesus say, Let the children come to me, and do not prevent them from the kingdom of heaven, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Have you ever wondered that the younger, even the youngest of children may have the capacity to understand that there is a God who loves them and calls each of them by name? This is the question that led two women to develop the formation program known as Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. They discovered that children as young as three years old can have a very profound relationship with God and that just as they respond joyously 
when receiving the gift at Christmas, they respond joyously with the gifts that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, offers them. Catechesis of the Good Shepherd takes place in a prepared environment known as the atrium. In the atrium, the children hear presentations based on scripture and liturgy, and then are invited to work with the materials such as figurines or articles of the mast to help them contemplate what they heard. It is through the work with the physical materials that children are given time to ponder what the stories and the gifts of Jesus means to them. The focus of Catechesis of the Good Shepherd is that they will grow in a loving relationship with Jesus. This program offers an incredible way to bring the wonder and awe of God into the hearts of our young children. In collaboration with St. Edmund, Holy Trinity will be offering three atrium sessions this fall and will meet once a week. Atrium sessions are open to any children ages three through six years old. If you are interested in learning more about Catechesis of the Good Shepherd or registering your child, please visit the parish website and check out Catechesis of the Good Shepherd page under the Formation tab. The City of Jerusalem is on display in the Narthex as a sample of one of the works children use. I will be in the Narthex after Mass to answer any questions. For anyone interested in seeing the atrium space, located at St. Eminem, please visit with me and we can set up a time. We also have many ways that you can be involved, so please visit with me if you are interested. You can help make Catechesis of the Good Shepherd a fruitful experience for our littlest disciples of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. And there is one other announcement. You can stand up. <clears throat> that the uh, pictorial directories, if you ordered one, they are in the narthex on the table. They're in boxes and they're alphabetized. Each, well, directory has your name on it. So please take yours, not someone else. Uh, just go through the boxes. They're well organized where they were. So let's hope they stay that way. Um, just an idle hope. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our closing hymn is hymn number 681, Good Shepherd, You Know Us, hymn number 681. Shepherd, you know us, you call us by name. You lead us, we gladly acknowledge your claim. Your voice has compelled us, we come at your call. And none you have chosen will finally fall. Good Shepherd, you warned us of robbers and thieves, the hireling, the wolf who destroys and deceives. All praise for your promise on which we shall stand, that no one can snatch us from out of your hand. Good Shepherd, you lay down your life for the sheep. Your love is not fickle, your gift is not cheap. You spend your life freely, you take it again. You died so we live, we are healed by your 